Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a look outside that weather window and we're looking outside our favorite view of the Wenatchee Valley and that's the cross camera up at Wenatchee Heights. Thanks to Sky5 for providing this beautiful view of the Wenatchee Valley. And you can see some clouds out there for most of the afternoon. We thought it would be mostly sunny and then some clouds rolling in, but actually more clouds than we thought as we made our way through the afternoon. Temperatures still on the mild side though, and that was nice out there today. And that warm trend will continue as we move into Thursday and once again on Friday, 70s for high temperatures, upper 70s for Thursday and maybe lower 80s as we get into Friday. But we need to keep, uh, keep in mind that we could see some scattered thunderstorms, not so much Thursday for us here in north central Washington, but by Friday, a good chance that we're, we'll see uh, some lightning and hear some thunder. We'll talk more about that coming up in your weather forecast a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. The father of a child who died from abuse in 2017 is suing the State Child Protective Services Agency for allegedly neglecting his case. Moses Lake Police say a call about a tryst in a gas station bathroom led to the seizure of nearly two pounds of illegal drugs last Saturday. And the State Attorney General's Office wants Judge Kristen Ferreira to reconsider her ruling that keeps a lawsuit against Governor Jay Inslee in the Chelan County Courts. But first, we begin tonight. A kidnapping suspect from San Antonio, Texas, was arrested Tuesday morning in Moses Lake, and his 16-year-old victim is now being reuni reunited with her family. Moses Lake police say the search for 28-year-old Andres Hernandez began last week after they'd received information he was in Grant County. Monday night, Sergeant Dean Gaddis located Hernandez's vehicle in the 1100 block of Grape Drive, and after setting up surveillance, police took him into custody the next morning. The girl was found in a nearby apartment unharmed. The teen had been missing since May 25th when security footage showed her getting into Hernandez's vehicle outside of Texas Domino's where they both worked. The girl's father, who talked with her Tuesday before leaving for Washington State, told KENS 5 News in San Antonio that she said she'd been taken at gunpoint. Moses Lake Police said Hernandez had a pistol when he was arrested. Authorities in Texas didn't issue an Amber Alert after her disappearance because they initially believed she'd gotten into the car willingly. Moses Lake Police said there is an ongoing investigation into Hernandez's activities while in Grant County and local charges are expected to follow. In addition to Moses Lake Police, U.S. Marshals, the Washington State Patrol and Grant County Sheriff's Office assisted in that search. Well, the father of a child who died from abuse in 2017 is suing the State Child Protective Services Agency for allegedly neglecting his case. Rustin Atkerson of East Wenatchee was just two years old when he died of massive brain trauma consistent with child abuse. Douglas County Sheriff's detectives never proved who inflicted the fatal injuries, but Rustin's mother, Elaine Hurd, pleaded guilty to felony mistreatment and received a one-year jail sentence. In his lawsuit filed May 26th in Chelan County, Rustin's father, Ian Atkerson, says CPS failed to adequately investigate earlier injuries Rustin suffered while in his mother's care, which might have prevented his death. The state has yet to file a response in that case. Moses Lake Police say a call about a tryst in a gas station bathroom led to the seizure of nearly two pounds of illegal drugs last Saturday. According to police, just after 1 a.m., they were called to Ernie's Fuel Stop on Kittleson Road after a couple had gone into a restroom together and stayed in there an inordinate amount of time. As 25-year-old Raymond Shorts and 19-year-old Deonja Charlo of Pablo, Montana, finally exited the convenience store, the officer said he saw Shorts shove a bottle of mango Snapple down his pants. When confronted, Shorts reportedly gave the officer his brother's name, but it turned out his brother had a warrant out for his arrest. Shorts was immediately arrested and searched. Police say they found cocaine in Shorts' pocket, and after obtaining a search warrant, they found over a pound of methamphetamine and just under a pound of heroin in their vehicle, a 2002 Audi registered to Charlo. Because of restrictions at the jail, police said they weren't able to book the couple into jail, so they were released pending charges. By the way, the police later discovered that Shorts had actually paid for that Snapple. 
Well, the state attorney general's office wants Judge Kristen Ferreira to reconsider her ruling that keeps a lawsuit against Governor Jay Inslee in the Chelan County Courts. Local plaintiffs want the judge to overturn the governor's emergency health orders during the COVID-19 pandemic and allow businesses in the Wenatchee Valley and elsewhere to reopen. The state's first move was a request to move the case to Thurston County, and Ferreira denied that motion last week. The state filed a motion for reconsideration, which the plaintiffs oppose and call, quote, a second bite at the apple. Ferreira has yet to schedule a hearing on that motion or any other issue in the case. The attorney general could, be, uh, uh, could appeal the ruling to a higher court. Well, coming up next, the Eastmont School District wants to start school as normal this fall, saying in a letter to Governor Jay Inslee, not to, to not to do so would be harmful to children's emotional well-being. When demonstrators marched in Wenatchee's Black Lives Matter event last Saturday, armed bystanders were there to greet them, and one of those armed men was an elected Douglas County Commissioner. In an announcement this morning, another major NCW event has decided to cancel this year because of COVID-19. And Douglas County Sheriff's Office has made some key services accessible now by appointment. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Buick and GMC are here to help, to keep you going through these unprecedented times. If you need a vehicle, we're offering 0% financing for up to 84 months. Plus, you may have the option to shop online and take delivery at home with Shop, Click, Drive. If you need service, our certified technicians are ready to help. You can even schedule your appointment online. Together, we'll get through these uncertain times. Buick and GMC, we're here to help. AC Checker has new owners who put customer service first. When you have to get there on time, call fast, friendly, reliable AC Checker, 663-TAXI. AC Checker has the industry's only on-time or it's free guarantee. Conditions apply. Call AC Checker, 663-TAXI to schedule your cab or schedule online at acchecker.com. Call American Classic Taxi, 663-TAXI. That's 663-8294. Welcome back. In another news, the Eastmont School District wants to start school as normal this fall, saying in a letter to Governor Jay Inslee that not to do so would be harmful to children's emotional well-being. The letter signed by all five members of the school board says COVID-19 guidelines posted by the Federal Centers for Disease Control are not reasonable. The board said the district has a long history of dealing with life-threatening illnesses. Quote, plainly put, we know how to keep kids safe, unquote. The state has not yet issued guidelines for restarting schools, but it's expected to, uh, that's expected later this month. The Eastmont School Board said a remote learning model is not providing students the education they deserve. Well, when demonstrators marched in Wenatchee's Black Lives Matter event last Saturday, armed bystanders were there to greet them, many saying they just wanted to keep the event safe. One of the armed men was an elected Douglas County Commissioner. Kyle Steinberg said he was there not in his official capacity, but as the owner of a Wenatchee business who wanted to protect property. Steinberg wouldn't be recorded for an interview, but he told NCW Life he'd heard rumors of possible agitators who might cause trouble during the event. Wenatchee police said there were no arrests or reports of violent incidents related to that march. You can read our full story on our website at ncwlife.com. Well, in an announcement this morning, the NCW Fair Board has decided to cancel this year's fair because of COVID-19. 
Board members say all possible avenues or changes were explored, but none could solve the problems created by Washington's Safe Start reopening plan. The board also said they don't have the means to temperature check each visitor to have social distancing in food lines, vendors, or the carnival area. The press release went on to say that the NCW Fair can't ask race, rodeo, and concert fans to sit six feet apart or limit the number of attendees. The fair board did say, though, that they have many people working diligently on a plan that would allow the fair to have a livestock show for the kids in the area that have worked so hard raising their animals. Well, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office has made some key services accessible now by appointment. The Law and Justice Center in Wenatchee remains closed, but Sheriff Kevin Morris announced on Tuesday that you can now make an appointment to file civil process papers or apply for a concealed pistol license. Most public offices have closed or reduced services during the coronavirus public health emergency. To make an appointment for available services, here's the number, call 884-0941. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today, 509-663-1710. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. Aging and Adult Care offers many in-home care options and services for seniors and family caregivers. But did you know they also offer free in-home delivered meals? Aging and Adult Care has expanded its program for home delivered meals to help elderly and vulnerable adults at this challenging time. If you are in need of prepared meals or know someone who could benefit, call Aging and Adult Care for more information about free home delivered meals. Call 509-886-0700. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, Wenatchee resident Ben Holton did a series of on-camera interviews with folks at last weekend's protest march about being an African-American and living in Wenatchee. Here's a look at what some of Ben heard. Tonight we feature Wenatchee resident Tony. We're here in Wenatchee, Washington. You know, and here in Wenatchee, it's, you know, less than 1% of the people are black. And, you know, really I wanted to come out and just see what's it like to be that person. I realized that, you know, there's probably a lot of us that, you know, don't feel like that we're doing anything racist or we don't feel racist. Does the black community feel included? And I want to make sure, you know, like everybody feels that this is a good place to live. And so we're just here asking stories, just finding out, you know, what it's like to be a black person living in our community and are we doing a good job to make sure that they're included and are we making our community a better place to live for everyone? I honestly do I was, feel invited. I was going to say that's going to yeah. be a long interview. I, 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 honestly, not, I honestly do feel I mean, invited. Really um, I mean, at first I was a little scared getting, you know, coming in. Um, but I, once I actually got here and, you know, got to interact with some folks and things of that nature, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I love it. I already told my family I don't plan on moving back because I, I actually love being here. Where are you from originally? Uh, D.C. Maryland area. Um, I mean, I haven't even experienced any any things like that. I mean, regardless of where you go, you're going to have, you know, one or two folks that are like that. Um, I haven't experienced anything like that. Uh, and, I mean, again, the most I think that can possibly be done to make it a little more, you know, inviting or a little more welcoming 
is continuing to do things like this. You know what I mean? Which is, like I said, one of our goals. Just continue to show the community that, you know, it is diverse. You know what I mean? We do have folks and uh, 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 people of color, you know, here and wanting to be involved and wanting to, you know, be a part of the community. So I think if we continue to do those, show these, uh, have these sort of events, we'll be fine. Time now for a check of that north central Washington weather forecast. And before we get to those details, outside we go looking out our weather window. And what a shot today, very dramatic as normal. This is our favorite, really, our weather window shot looking down from the cross uh, up on Wenatchee Heights. And you can see some clouds out there. We did see some blue sky at times today, but for the most part, we did see a lot of those low and mid-level clouds all across north central Washington. One thing nice, though, a ridge of high pressure built in, and that kept our temperature temperatures very mild today. Remember 63 to degrees today, 76 degrees. So quite a jump from yesterday and that's almost normal. 77 is where we should be for this time of year. 52 was our low this morning. That as well, almost where we should be at 54 for normal record high for the third straight day. 2015 was a hot first part of June, wasn't it? 96 degrees our record high on this date. 42 our record low. That was in 1973. I told you I would upgrade our precip total from that little bit of rain we received yesterday, and there it is, very little bit of rain, two one hundredths of an inch at Pangborn, and that now gets us to 2.52 inches goes back to January 1st. Sunrise 504 this morning and the sun will set tonight once again at 857. Let's take a look at how your Thursday will shape up. And really the only difference between Thursday and today, temperatures about the same. We're going to see shower activity develop at least during the afternoon tomorrow. 81 for Moses Lake, 80 in Afreda, upper 70s as well for Quincy, 77 in Wenatchee and Kashmir. A nice day up at Lake Wenatchee at 72 degrees, 76 at Lake Chelan and 75 for you folks up in Okanagan County in OMAC. Taking a look at what we can expect now over the next seven days. Let's take you through it tonight. Partly cloudy skies, light winds out there, so that's nice. It will be nice and mild tonight. High pressure ridge over all of us here in the Pacific Northwest and the Western U.S. As we get into Thursday, that's when we'll see those mostly cloudy skies. We're seeing it right now, and it's already moved in. 30% chance of showers developing. It will be nice and warm tomorrow once, uh, once again, but you can see those scattered showers are pretty scattered around Washington State on Thursday. A much better defined line of showers will move our way. These are thunder Thunderstorms, the yellow and orange. So right here in central and north central Washington, we have a 40% chance of that happening. So keep your eye on the sky late in the day on Friday as we get into the weekend. Then on Saturday, just partly cloudy skies. Things will dry out, but a little bit of a trough of low pressure. You can see it right here will cause our temperatures to really nosedive as we get into the upcoming weekend. We'll nosedive into the upper 60s, lower 70s, and that's pretty much how we'll stay on Sunday too. Partly cloudy and light wind. Once again, temperatures mainly in the lower 70s here in north central Washington, which is now below normal. Many of you, they probably like those temperatures. And then as we get into Monday, back to the rain showers just for one day. Mostly cloudy, a 30% chance for rain. It's all from this area of low pressure off the coast of British Columbia, and it's swinging some showers our way. I really don't think we're going to see a whole lot from that. And then by Tuesday, early next week, partly cloudy skies. We will see this big a ridge of high pressure begin to slide into the western U.S and that'll warm us up with temperatures seasonal, meaning upper 70s. Let's take a look now at your Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling 7-day forecast. Tonight, a mild one, 56 degrees for an overnight low. 30% chance for afternoon showers tomorrow and 77. There's our warmest day of the seven days, 81, but Remember, thunderstorms, a definite possibility. Gusty winds, hail, a possibility. So keep your eye on the sky on Friday. 74 as we kick off our weekend. Saturday, 75 Sunday. And then a shot for rain on Monday and 75. Beautiful on Tuesday, partly cloudy with a high of 76. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this.
owner Andrew Vickery brings years of experience to help you transition your backyard into a place where memories are made, family time is looked forward to, and friends are always welcome. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa offers many different styles and sizes of artesian spas, both new and used, as well as residential and commercial pool and spa services, regular maintenance and repairs, and all the chemicals required to keep your pool and spa crystal clear. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and Air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you, staying home and staying healthy. Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life Channel. This is my 52nd broadcast from home. Hopefully we get to level two and I can go back to the office and kind of do things like normal. But in the meantime, like a lot of you, still working from home. Well, Major League Baseball management set a deadline for a deal with players to be today if they'd hope to start the shortened season by July 4th. It's not going to happen. The Players Union responded to management's proposal yesterday saying they won't agree to anything less than a full prorated salary. Representatives for the players also said they'd be willing to reduce the regular season to 89 games from the 82 in Monday's proposal, but agreed to expanding the playoffs from 10 to 16 teams. Now, in the players' counterproposal, they said they'd agree to end the World Series in mid to late November and shift postseason games to neutral sites. Players proposed starting the season July 10th, with it ending October 11th. Now, Major League Management set a deadline for an agreement today if they hope to start the season by the Independence Weekend. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. Well, the Mariners have the sixth pick in today's Major League Baseball draft first round. According to Mariner insider Greg John, Seattle is in the market for more young pitching. They have their eyes on Georgia's standout Emerson Hancock, fellow right-hander Max Mayer out of Minnesota, or Louisville lefty Reed Detmers. John says not to be surprised if Seattle nabs New Mexico State's Nick Gonzalez if he's still available. He's a mid middle infielder who was a league MVP in the WAC and also an MVP in the Cape Cod League. Mariners wait behind Detroit, Baltimore, Miami, Kansas City, and Toronto in today's first round. They'll have the 43rd overall pick in the second round tomorrow, plus a 64th overall selection in the competitive balance round B. Now, unlike the NFL, where teams flip-flop between rounds, the draft order in Major League Baseball remains the same. So the Mariners will have the sixth pick in each of the rounds over the next couple of days. Well, the Seahawks have added a well-recognized name to the front office with the hiring of Alonzo Highsmith. The former NFL running back was brought on board as a consultant leading up to this year's draft. Now, according to ESPN's Brady Henderson, Highsmith will be a personnel executive in Seattle's scouting department. After a successful college career as a fullback for Jimmy Johnson at Miami, Highsmith was drafted by Houston back when they were the Oilers in the third overall pick in 1987. His NFL career shortened by knee injuries only lasted five seasons. Highsmith worked with John Schneider in Green Bay as the senior personnel executive back in 2012. Prior to coming to Seattle, he worked for the Cleveland Browns in a similar capacity. Alonzo Highsmith now on the uh, staff for the Seahawks. Well, NASCAR is ready to reopen for fans. After three weeks of racing without fans, NASCAR decided a limited number of fans can attend races this month at Homestead uh, Miami Speedway and Talladega Super Speedway. The governing body for the racing uh, says all fans will be screened before entering, be required to wear face coverings, keep a social distance of six feet, and not have access to the infield. This means about 1,000 fans at the Homestead race and about 5,000 at Talladega. NASCAR says military service members will be selected to attend the first race. Fans wishing to attend Talladega will have to buy tickets in a first-come, first-served basis. But a positive move in a direction for a uh, widely attended, usually, uh, sport here in the United States. Well, after two practices uh, getting under their belt at Wenatchee Valley's Super Oval, it sounds like Jeremy Andrews is cooking up a race idea. Uh, we've been in touch about the potential of the Super Oval teaming up with the NCW Life Channel to uh, bring a race live on the air. Of course, we're not going to be 
with any fans in attendance. But uh, we'll see if we can work out this deal. Uh, it would be coming up here in just a few weeks. We'll hopefully have tomorrow. Uh, more information tomorrow here on the NCW Life Channel. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has forced the world to change its plans, such as the case for basketball star Haley Van Lith. She just graduated from Casual High School, is finishing up her running start program at Winnipeg Valley College. In a recent appearance on NCW Life's Life with Lisa, Haley talked about the challenges of staying active in base, uh, basketball when everything is shut down. I'm very blessed. Uh, I have um, access to a nice weight room and um, a half court sh like basketball court that I can still get shots up in. Um, so I really uh, am very blessed in this situation, but I mean, I can't play, I can't play live, um, which sometimes you can only do so much training before you're like, I want to play, like I want to get back on the court um, and play defense and like steal the ball and score. But um, no, I have a lot of stuff to be grateful for right now, um, and I'm just going to keep working away, and hopefully uh, everyone stays healthy and we can get back to basketball soon. Van Lith will be headed to Louisville on a full-ride scholarship next year. In the meantime, she says the pandemic kept her from partaking in several high-profile events. So this spring, I was selected for two All-American games, the McDonald's All-American and the Jordan Brand Classic. And they're two like very um, honorable games. Uh, lots of past great NBA, WBA players have been a part of them. And just not being able to participate, being selected um, was great news. Like I was so happy, very uh, blessed. But I, you know, you want to get selected, but you also want to play in it and like be a part of it. Um, and just not getting the opportunity to do that was hard for me to swallow at first. But um, obviously. Uh, sports becomes very low on the priority list when something like this is happening uh, in the world. And even um, I was supposed to be a part of something called Culture Jam, where I was going to get to collaborate with um, music artists um, and all sorts of different people um, in L.A. this uh, spring. And I'm also not getting to do that, um, which I was super excited about. But at the same time, um, if it's meant to be for me, it'll come up again in my life. And um, all I can do is just uh, be with my family right now and not try to focus on everything I've lost. You can see Haley's complete interview on our website on uh, Life with Lisa with Lisa Bradshaw. Just head to our website, ncwlife.com. Click on uh, full episodes and find Life with Lisa. That's sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric. And as we leave you tonight, Chelan County PUD General Manager Steve Wright, serving Northwest Public Power for nearly 40 years, has received the Alan Richardson Statesmanship Award. The American Public Power Association honor recognizes public power leaders who work to achieve consensus on national issues important to public power utilities. Wright is recognized as one of the country's experts within the energy industry and public power. During a career spanning four decades, Wright has shown his commitment to collaboration and public engagement as he's led critical discussions about public power and policy decisions. Now let's check in with Dan Kuntz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? As you know by now, there's going to be no West Coast League collegiate baseball season. Uh, this summer, which is a real bummer for us baseball fans, but tomorrow we are going to get a chance to visit with Ian Sanderson, of course, as the new head coach of the Wenatchee Apple Sox. The Apple Sox are planning something once we get maybe into phase three here in Chelan County. One way or the other, they want to have some semblance of baseball at Paul Thomas Senior Field. We'll check in with Ian Sanderson, the head coach of the Apple Sox, tomorrow on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, plus everything else you need to start your Thursday. We'll see you live here tomorrow at 7 a.m. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.
is Caitlin Hedershey, the producer of the NCW Life magazine. Each week, I'm bringing you a look behind the scenes of the faces, places, and events that make North Central Washington the place we call home. Tune in every weekday for an in-depth look at a new topic each week. From local artists in their studios to businesses breaking barriers that might surprise you and everything in between. Join me on the NCW Life magazine right here on the NCW Life channel.